All right. Back here in the slide set uh, showing us the overall thread of the, uh, the demonstration, what we saw in that previous segment was Tanuj, the test lead, used Rational Quality Manager to go ahead and align a test sprint plan. Uh, and then we saw how Scott went ahead and checked that uh, alignment uh, with the, uh, the current uh, sprint. So now that we have the work planned out and we've uh, created a test plan, what we can do next is go ahead and actually develop the lap timer. And in this case, that's going to be Deb's job. So Deb's going to go ahead and develop the lap timer uh, using uh, uh, Rational Rhapsody and uh, then go ahead and, and build uh, an integration build so that Tanuj can go ahead and test this. All right, so let's navigate over to the uh, demo here and let's see how Deb does this. So Deb's going to work inside of Rational Team Concert. The difference is that this is the Eclipse-based client. So Rational Team Concert has both the web-based client and the Eclipse-based client. And what's nice about this is uh, the development tool that she's using, Rational Rhapsody, is also an Eclipse plugin. So she can use her collaboration, configuration management, build, uh, model-driven development, uh, source code editor, all those great things all in, all in one environment here. Okay, so she's gone ahead and brought up her workspace, and the first thing she might do is go to the uh, My Work tab to see what uh, work items have been assigned to her. And so once uh, this reads the, the information here, what we'll see is those work items that Scott assigned to her in a, in a previous segment, uh, she can now see those in her inbox. So this could have been received as an email or an RSS feed. In this case, she sees them right in her inbox inside of a, a RTC Eclipse client. So we'll go ahead and accept all those new things. And if you remember, uh, she's actually working on, uh, currently in progress, on two different things, modeling the detailed specification for the lap timer control. Uh, as well as uh, modeling the detailed specification for the uh, the lap timer button. So both of those are, are currently uh, uh, in progress uh, for Deb. And so what we can do is uh, just show briefly what she's done so far. Uh, and what we can do is just switch perspectives here to the Rhapsody perspective. So Rational Rhapsody is a, uh, a model-driven development environment, uh, great for both systems engineering and real-time embedded software engineering. And in this particular example, we'll see how uh, Deb has created a UML model uh, for the stopwatch and how she goes ahead and uh, adds the lap timer control and generates uh, production quality code and, and tests that, uh, that model out, executes the model to make sure it works as, uh, as expected before uh, handing it off to Tanuj to, to be formally tested. So here in, inside of Rhapsody, um, what we can do is we can see that the all the requirements from doors uh, can be brought right into the, the the modeling environment here, and let's take a look at some of the, the, the some of the work that uh, Deb has already done. Uh, so here we can see a use case diagram, and what she's done is she's gone ahead and created a new uh, use case uh, for uh, displaying the lap timer. We can see how we can tie use cases uh, to requirements as well here. So she's gone ahead and created that new use case and, and she has linked that to a sequence diagram to describe how the lap timer works. Uh, so essentially as the time is counting, uh, if the user presses and releases a lap button that sends a lap event to the timer, the timer stores that and shows the uh, elapsed lap time for three seconds before um, continuing to show the, uh, the regular elapsed time. Uh, and a couple other things that have been done, uh, so if we take a look here, we have a class diagram as well, and we can see uh, the overall structure uh, of, the, uh, of the application uh, thus far. Okay, so she's done, that's some of the, uh, the work that she's done already, um, so what I'm going to do is just switch back to the work items view. So we can go ahead and, and close these out. Uh, we'll say that she's completed these two work items for now and start working on a new uh, work items. So we'll complete both of those and we'll close those out. Now so the next thing here is uh, she needs to go ahead and complete a lap timer button. So uh, she's decided she's going to go ahead and work on that next. So what she does is just bring up the details for that particular story uh, or devel development task and go ahead and start working on that. Okay so let's see how she develops uh, the lap timer button. So back here, uh, what we can do is go to the uh, class view, 
And uh, as we saw in the sequence diagram, she really uh, needs a, another uh, class for the lap, uh, lap button. So we'll go ahead and create that class. And since the uh, lap button really has a lot of the same functionality as the button class here, she'll go ahead and, and create a generalization arrow to uh, realize the behavior of that. So not only does it realize the uh, you know events and signals, but it gets the state machine as well. And what we can do is go ahead and bring up the details for that inherited state machine and just slightly change this. So when we get a press and release, what we're going to see happen here is it's going to go ahead and send an event to the timer class. So uh, the, time, the event in this case is EVLAP. Okay, so she's gone ahead and, and added that piece in. Um, the other thing that she uh, wants to do here is that the lap button also, since it is sending an event to the timer class, it needs an association to that class. Okay, so she's gone ahead and added that piece in, and uh, what she also wants to do is go ahead and, and uh, add uh, the, the, uh, uh, the lap button to the, uh, the build, uh, so actually create an instantiation of that, that particular class, so we can drag that lap button right on to a composite class here and make it an object and link it to the timer. Okay. One last thing is uh, she's also um, created a panel and the panel is useful for execution so when she actually executes this she's going to test it out by pushing different buttons to see how the model and the code respond to that. So she has here uh, a couple buttons that uh, she wants to go ahead and tie off to the uh, the lap button uh, events, so EV press and an EV release. Okay, so that that'll go ahead and be useful for when she goes ahead and, and uh, executes and tests this out in uh, a few moments here. All right, so that's pretty much it. She's she's gone ahead and added in the details needed for the uh, lap timer button. We'll go ahead and save that off. Uh, and now normally we'd go ahead and execute and test this. We'll skip that for now. We'll do that in a moment. One of the things that we'll see down here, because I'm working also uh, within uh, Rational Team Concert, uh, Rational Team Concert has configuration uh, management as well. So what's happening here is as I make modifications to the model, it's keeping track of all the files I touch, all the, all the modifications that I make, and associating that uh, uh, with uh, what we can do is associate that with, with a change um, with the uh, work item itself. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, and check in and deliver these changes. And uh, we'll go ahead and associate th those changes with the, uh, the, the work item I'm currently working on and go ahead and, and uh, uh, finish that off. So this is very nice. I can go ahead and, and have tasks that uh, I can then see how the developer uh, made changes uh, to the model or source code uh, to go ahead and, and uh, you know, complete that task. So uh, going back here to the lap timer button. Uh, story here what we can do is now go ahead and complete this we could say that uh, uh, that uh, you know we can see here not only the uh, uh, the parent and children stuff but if we want to go ahead and take a look at the change set as well we can view all the details of how it's tied to uh, the various model elements so the change set is automatically associated with that all right so let's go ahead and say that um, um, we've gone ahead and uh, completed this And uh, let's go ahead and close that out. And the, the last thing we want to do here is uh, we have one more uh, item that we want to work on, and that's the, uh, the lap timer control. So now we'll go ahead and implement this as well, so we'll start working on that. And back here in Rhapsody. Uh, only so, only a minor change uh, since uh, Deb has done a lot of the work already. There's really only a minor change that needs to be done, uh, and that is uh, if we look at the uh, overview here, uh, we can see that the the timer class has a store lap time operation, and what we're going to do is just go ahead and uh, quickly modify that uh, that uh, operation so it knows how to store the lap time. So uh, to save time here, I've just uh, got some code. We'll go ahead and copy and paste this code right into the implementation. All right, so that piece of code will go ahead and now store the lap timer. And now what we can do is, uh, now that we've, uh, sit, we'll go ahead and just apply this and save it. And now that we've added the button and the lap timer uh, control logic in, let's go ahead and test this out 
by executing the uh, the model here. So we'll go ahead and save this. 